So Speak is a free resource to any communication student and we do many different things but one of the things that we do is that we offer free tutoring um, with any communication content. It could be speech preparation, presentation preparation, it could also just be helping you with assignments in your communication courses or content. You're not quite sure between this concept or that concept, you need some clarification and you want to pop into our tutoring center and ask a tutor for help, we are more than willing to help you and that is just part of what you get as a communication student that is free and available resource to you. So I encourage you to use that. This is something else that we do which is we offer some free workshops throughout the semester and you are invited to come and enjoy those. This is a topic that I have taught in my class for many years that I've found is a very useful, short topic that my students continually in reflecting through the course have said, this was the one thing, Mrs. H, that I really liked and has helped me immediately improve my relationships. And it's kind of got a funny word, it's called bidding. So when I say bidding, how many of you kind of picture an auction, like an art auction, or maybe in a movie you picture like a fancy art auction with people in lovely suits and ties and dresses sitting around bidding on like the Mona Lisa. That's kind of like, I shall pay $200,000 for that. You know, that's kind of, when I think of a bid, that's what I think of. Well, bidding as an interpersonal communication topic is interesting. When you place a bid, if you are in one of those fancy auctions, if you are placing a bid, what are you saying when you place a bid? Can you kind of in your own words tell me what a bid, what does a bid mean in that context? I'm willing to pay or whatever X amount for the item. Right, in like, return. yes, exactly. Like, what else does it say? I want that. Yeah, I want that. So I'm willing to pay that because I want that. A bid is a way that you signal to the group that you're interested in something or you want something. You want to connect your wallet to that item so you can put it in your home or your museum or whatever. So that's the idea of a bid. Interpersonal bids take that idea and they place it inside the context of a relationship that is important to you. So here's kind of an introductory video that gives you an overview, just a couple of minutes. Imagine hear your partner let out an exasperated sigh. In that fleeting moment, you have a choice. Keep going about your day or ask what's on their mind. These small, daily crossroads may seem insignificant, but the choices you make while interacting with your partner could, over time, make or break your relationship. The sigh is what relationship researchers Drs. John and Julie Gottman would call a bid for connection. Bids can be small or big, verbal or nonverbal. We can choose to turn towards our partner in these moments and accept their bids, or turn away from them and ignore their bids. The Gottmans have spent the last four decades studying thousands of couples to answer the question, what separates the relationship masters from the relationship disasters. They found a critical difference in how each type of couple responds to bids for connection. In these moments, masters turn towards each other 86% of the time. Disasters turn towards each other only 33% of the time. A tendency to turn towards your partner forms the basis of trust, emotional connection, passion, and a satisfying sex life. When couples break up, it's usually not because of big issues like conflict or infidelity. More often, it's a result of the resentment and distance that build up over time when partners continually turn away from bids for connection. So take a page from the Relationship Masters Playbook. Notice when your partner makes a bid. Show interest. Ask questions. Nod. Listen. And put away your screens. Choose to turn towards your partner. Okay, so that gives you a very brief overview of what a bid is in a romantic context. The longer I have taught bids with students, the more I've tried to help them see, yes, this is a bedrock skill for a romantic relationship, but it's also a bedrock skill in any important relationship. Yesterday, 
I was meeting a friend just for an hour or two at Chick-fil-A and she had three small children and they were, if you've eaten at a Chick-fil-A at a playground, they were in and out of the playground about 76 times. And if you have ever viewed that or can imagine that, children are masters at making bids. So she and I are trying to have a conversation and her daughter is knock, knock, knock on the glass. Mommy, ah! You know, and then back. And then the one child comes out. Mommy, do you think it's going to rain? You know, back inside. Mommy, I'm thirsty. Mommy, we are kind of naturally wired to make bids for connection from the time that we're born. And so the concept of bids doesn't really reside in a romantic relationship context. It really is in any important relationship context. It can be in parenting, it can be in siblings, it can be in close friendships, it can even be in close work friendships. Um, you kind of have to take it and make it broader to any interpersonal relationship context. Um, so let's go over some basics. Um, I gave you a note card if you want to take some notes. You also have a handout if you want to take some notes. But let's go over some definitions because teachers love definitions, right? Let's get that out of the way. Um, let's start with what is a bid in the interpersonal context. It is a day-to-day -day reach for connection. It is someone reaching out and asking, will you connect with me? To further clarify what it is, it can be overt or it can be covert. So what does overt mean? Another word for overt would be obvious, right? Um, obvious, like it's pretty obvious when a bid is made that's like, do you like my hair I got cut yesterday, <laughs> right? That is an obvious bid for connection. Sometimes a bid for connection is not so obvious. Sometimes it takes a little bit more nuance and skill to recognize a bid. A bid might be just sitting down next to a person and sighing with no words at all. And so depending on how clued in you are to your surroundings and to that person and to maybe you've got earbuds in or maybe you're distracted with something or maybe there's some external or internal noise going on to use a good communication term right there, um, you may not pay attention to that more covert bid. So also it can be nonverbal as I've said or it can be verbal. It can be something said or it can be something that they just do. It can be a reach for a hand. Um, it can just be I'm leaning in for a hug. It can be saddling up next to you, kind of sitting closer than that person normally does. It can just be they're sort of hunched over and they look sad, but they're doing so in a way that they kind of want you to notice they look sad. Remember, the majority of our messages are nonverbal, right? Some experts say 60%, some experts say 93%. So the majority of what we communicate in messages are going to be nonverbal. And that's a more powerful medium than verbal. So you could connect that to say most of our bids are going to be nonverbal or in the nonverbal camp. So what is most important to take away from the concept of bidding? As you saw in the video, Dr. John and Julie Gottman are relationship experts. So they study this in the context of romantic relationships for over 40 years. And they found that couples that consistently turn towards each other or take the bid, and we'll unpack that more in a minute, have a more long-term success rate in their marriage, between 86 and 90% success rate in that marriage to stay together than those who do not turn towards most of those bids. And this is even more important when you hit conflict. Now we take that out of romantic relationships and we put that in children, friends, um, siblings, you can see if we continually turn away, turn against people's bids, this starts to damage relationships. Think of a time when somebody didn't listen to you and it hurt your feelings. 
Can you think of one in your head right now? Can, you, can everybody think of at least one time somebody important to you did not listen to you or did not pick up on a bid? Can anybody think of one in their lifetime where it hurt your feelings? Maybe more than one? More than likely, there probably was some bid involved there or multiple bids that can damage our relationship over time. So the value of learning this skill is that it will help us to convey to the other person as we learn to recognize and acknowledge the bid that that relationship has value to us. So the key word there is why is this important is that we're conveying value. If we continually don't pick up on bids and don't turn towards the bid, we're saying, in essence, your relationship is not valuable to me. And likewise, when we do, we're saying it is. So a bid, essentially, when you break it down, a bid says three things. A bid basically says, I want connection with you now. Now, it doesn't sound super deep. It doesn't sound like rocket science, does it? But when you break it down, a bid says, I want connection with you now. That has a lot of meaning to it. Because if you miss any of that, it can have ramifications. It's not saying I want connection with anyone. It's saying I want connection with you. And it's not saying I want connection with you at any point. It's saying I want the connection with you now. So there can be value in you missing a bid and trying to follow up later. That's not completely devoid of value because you can say I'm so sorry yesterday you said this thing and I really missed it I missed the boat on that and I'm really sorry that I didn't pick up on that the way I should have and then here's the response I should have said so there is value in that trying to fix it when you miss a bid but the greater value is in recognizing that the bid was I want connection with you now the greater value it's sort of like in investing to put it in investing terms the stock value price was highest when the bid was made you can get in on a little bit of the value later but the stock value price has lessened when you come back to it tomorrow okay so there are three responses to a bid and they referenced two responses in the video turning towards and turning away so you could kind of picture that as turning towards the person turning away from the person and turning against the person so to put this in another way the turning towards the person is accepting the bid i am accepting your bid smiley face okay turning away from the bid is ignoring the bid you're thinking mm, this is mostly like ignoring this is kind of neutral territory but it's not really neutral territory don't put it in the neutral category it's more like that emoji of the yellow face where it's like the two straight eyes and then the straight mouth it doesn't seem like a neutral face does it it's more like mm, meh. it's not that's not really a neutral position. It's still a negative position, and it still does damage to the relationship. Um, and then turning against is outright rejection. That is frowny face, okay? <laughs> to put that in emoji language. So those are your three responses to any bit. All right, so here's, here's a specific example up on the board. Bid for connection. I gave that presentation today. I was so nervous. Turning towards, oh really? Tell me about it. How did it go? Turning away, kind of ignoring it. Hmm, okay. 
turning against it, kind of rejecting the bid, is whatever. Can't you see I'm working? Like, I am rejecting the bid. I am rejecting your bid for attention and connection right now with me because I am focused on what I want and what I need to do. Which you can see over time, your relationship can handle some of this. They can only handle so much of this. So just like in the video, it said mostly relationships don't blow up over big things. Mostly relationships blow up over the culmination or the accumulation of little things. And mostly those little things are moments of bids that are ignored. Same thing in relationships that are friendship based. Um, same thing in work relationships where people feel dissatisfied at work because they feel that they have not been paid attention to or listened to and their bids have not been accepted. Okay, so let's, here's another example. Let's give me one, one more example and then we'll practice a little bit. Okay, here's another example. Here's a bid. Hey, can you come in here for a minute? Probably hear that one a lot, right? From mom, dad, friend. Hey, can you come in? Turning towards would be, sure, what's up? Turning away, ignoring it would be, in a second, yeah, in a second. I have this game almost beat. I'm doing something else, I'm doing something else. That's a very common place. And in relationships where we feel secure, we would feel secure to do that. And most of the time, that doesn't do a lot of damage to the relationship unless you're doing that a lot over time. Turning against the bid would be, can't you see I'm watching a game? Like, absolutely not. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's outright rejection of the bid. Okay, so I'm going to, if you, if I have some volunteers, I'm going to give us an example. I'm going to have you read one, and then as a group, I want you to tell me if that's a turn towards, a turn away, or a turn against, and we'll decide as a group. Okay, do you have a volunteer? Okay. Okay. All right. Will you read the example? Okay. Emily's going to read the example. Check out that view. Check out that view. Pretty normal, like you're on vacation. Maybe you're seeing a beautiful beach scene. Okay. Check out that view. All right. What's your response? Wow, that's amazing. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, now do we feel like which of the three categories this is? Turning towards. You've accepted the bid. You're like, I'm going to share this moment with you. I'm going to connect with you so that we both see this beautiful view. We've built a memory. Picture, Instagram, done. Okay, but what is your response? While not looking up from the book. Mm-hmm. Lovely view. <laughs> okay, so what type of response was that? Turning away? Turning away? What about you? Really? You had me look up for that? <laughs> really? You had me look up for that? Okay, so that would be obviously oh, rejection. rejection, turning against. Yeah. Okay, all right, let's do another one. Another volunteer. Okay, I'll give you another one. Okay. Okay. Do another one? Okay, I'll have you read the example. Okay, you read the example for us. Did you hear about the drama with that company? Did you hear about that drama with that company? Very good. I'm just repeating it so our microphone makes sure we picks it up, okay? Okay, who's got one? Go ahead. You go first. Oh, all right. Uh, you need to get off Facebook. You need to get off Facebook. <laughs> you better get off Facebook. Okay, what did that feel like? Rejection. Felt like rejection, right? Um, now, is it possible that the person kind of does need to get off Facebook? Uh, it's probably possible the person doesn't need to get off Facebook. But that response did feel rejecting. It felt turning against the actual bid. Okay, uh, what do you have? 
Okay, and, and what do we think about that one? Turning towards asking for more information, kind of starting that dialogue to see what the person's thinking. Okay. Just nothing. Okay. And, and what would that obviously be? Okay. Good. All right. Well, just one more like this. Okay. Okay. Our rock star volunteers. You, you want to do another one? You want to do another one? Okay. Okay. You read our example. Oh, I didn't plan that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm so sick of being overlooked at work. Sadness. Okay. What's your response to that? Have you tried talking to your boss? Have you tried talking to your boss? I mean, let's fix this. Let's fix the problem. Okay. Let's just cut straight to that solution right now. Now, a person who offers a solution to an emotional message, do they often have a desire that is good or an intention that is good to try to help? Often, yeah. Often, yeah. I mean, this is something I have to remind myself a lot, that we want other people to judge us on our intentions rather than our actions. But then a lot of times we flip-flop with other people and we judge them on their actions versus their intentions. Isn't that interesting? So when my husband gives me a quick solution, when I just needed a supportive answer back, and I'm like, ha, ah, you know, and I really just wanted like, honey, that's so hard. Hug. Remember that. Write that down. Um, <laughs> I have to remember oftentimes that offering of a solution often does come from a desire and an intention that is good. But those of you who are tempted to offer that quick solution, remember oftentimes a person can't hear the quick solution until they've received the supportive message. It's sort of like they have those really big Beats headphones on and until they get the support, they can't hear your brilliant solution. So you're just wasting your brilliance. Just save it until they receive the support. And then you can almost feel the headphones come off. And then they're like, oh, what do you think I should do? And then, then you offer the brilliant solution, right? Okay, so who, who has a, can you see how offering the solution too soon almost feels a little bit like, like you're, you're rejecting because it feels like you have sort of steamrolled the emotion because you've rejected the bid for the emotion? Yeah. And also, I tend to be a more defensive person, but that would make me feel a little bit defensive. Like, have you talked to your boss? It's kind of like, well, have you done anything about it? Yes. Great, great point. Versus it's almost like, haven't you thought of this? Yeah. Versus if they said later, after giving me support, they could say, well, do you think it would help if you talked to your boss? Like, that would make Right. Like what right. And sometimes it's about how they phrase it, right? Like you said, sometimes if they say something that is more turning towards first, they can eventually work their way around to the solution and say, like, I wonder if we could think about how this could be better for you. I wonder if talking to certain people may alleviate it. You know, just, just kind of entering this brainstorming space, but not doing so in such a rush that it feels like they've rejected because what was the initial what was the initial thing said i'm so sick of being overlooked at work what are they bidding for are they bidding for you to fix the problem are they bidding for a solution or are they bidding for emotional connection remember what they're bidding for they're not bidding for item 662. They're bidding for this. They're, they tell you in the message, I feel overlooked. So they're bidding for emotion. They're not bidding for solution. So what you've done is you've rejected their bid and you've given them 
an item they didn't bid on. You've given them an ugly art piece and they wanted the vase. <laughs> okay? So you have to remember what they're actually bidding for. Okay, who had a different response? Oh, everybody's like, what a great response. Yeah, that was really good. I'm sorry. I wish they saw what I saw. You know, that, that was a very supportive turn towards the exact emotion that takes a great deal of trying to put yourself in their shoes. Empathy and, um, and to use one of our terms, cognitive complexity. You know, trying to put yourself completely in the mental space, that perspective of, gosh, let me think through a time where I felt overlooked at work, and let me think through how I see this person, and, how, and, and what kind of response builds into that emotion. Very good. That was definitely turned towards. And did you have one? You need to build a backbone with those people. Oh, oh you need to build a backbone with those people. Ooh, okay, now again, this person cares about the person who made the bid. They don't want them to be mistreated. They don't want them to be overlooked. They're probably feeling what? Angry on their behalf. Yeah, they're feeling righteous anger. They're feeling protective. They're feeling like, I'm going to walk in there and give that person a piece of my mind. Okay, well, how is that really going to help the person who's already struggling at work for, for you to get all up in their business and feel all this on their behalf. It's, you know, congratulations, you have now added your suffering and anger to the um, more to the negative feeling of, of this person. Now this person is feeling more feelings. You know, you, you've got to remember what the bid is for. The, the person has not bid for you to understand um, that to, to get angry on their behalf. It's, it's to tap into their more vulnerable emotions. So they're not asking, you know, bid on what they're bidding on here and, and not tell them what to do. Almost never is a turn towards bid answered in an imperative. That's going back to our grammar days. So remember there's types of sentences and one type of sentence is an imperative sentence, which is a command like, shut the door, or go to work, or feed the dog. Those are all imperatives. And direct communicators use a lot more imperatives than indirect communicators. That's more in their language set. And almost never, almost never, is a turn towards bid phrased in an imperative. It's just not seen as a super supportive way to turn towards, because it's really seen as telling the person what to do. It's more, here's a quick solution territory. Okay, now, if everybody could kind of get into a group of two or three, I'm going to give you a bid, and then I want you to come up with a turn towards, and come up with either a turn away or a turn against. Okay? And if you want to be superstar, you can come up with all three. But, I just want a really good turn towards, and then one that would fall into the other categories. Okay? Now here's the example. I feel like a terrible mother. Oh, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. Mother's Day is coming up, so I don't know. You never know. Let's, let's figure out how to support mothers. I feel like a terrible mother. I feel like a horrible mother. I have handed you a difficult assignment. <laughs> Whew, okay. Let's start with maybe something that you would not want to say. Does anybody have maybe a turn away or a turn against that you came up with? Something that you think would not be a successful response that you want to share? There's, you've got a good one? Okay. And this is a safe space. I'm not going to tell your mother. You can give me a turn against or a turn away. Well, spend more time with the kids then. Oh, that's yeah, that is. 
Oh, that one, that one does leave a little bit of a, a, a scar. Okay, do not respond that way. That's a no-no. A third example, what not to do. Do not. Okay, anybody else have a do not do this at home? Yeah. Well, you could be better at laundry, or you could be better at maybe board games or whatever. You know, try cooking a little. I don't know. Whatever you want to. Do not. Okay. Anybody else? A no-no. We were like, why do you say that? Like in a okay. disregarding sort of Yeah, just like kind that. of a disregarding like, ugh, why would you say that? Or, ugh, why do you say that? Yeah. Um, just sort of blowing it off. Yeah. Yeah, um, like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anybody have an example of a turn towards? How, how would you turn towards that and try to accept that bid for emotional connection? Yeah, why do you say that? Or what makes you feel that way? Because I think you're a great mom. Like, the kids love you, and I think you're a great mom. Why would you feel like that? Yeah, very good. Um, the kids love you. I love you. Why, why would you feel that way? Ours was similar. Yeah. It was, uh, well, I don't see you that way. Tell me why you feel that way or what's happening. Yeah, very good. And we talked a little bit about it kind of depends somewhat on your relationship with the person. Definitely. Yes. I think that is what they want to hear if yes. They do know a good mom. Yeah, certainly. It's hard to put yourself in that situation when you don't know what's happening. So if I was like she said, if I was the husband and like I'm very acutely aware of, you know, what's going on in the house, you have a certain response then. But you can still attempt to make the person feel better, even though you don't know the intimates of the problem. Yeah, certainly. Okay, very good. That was a tough one, and you did super, super well. So the handout I gave you, um, the printer gave you some extra white pieces of paper. I'm sorry for that. You have all of the examples that we talked about today and a few extra broken down into the categories, so you can review those. Also, you have on the last page, the Gottman Institute that was referenced in the video and made our video, gives you a list. This is a little bit deeper reflection but this these are categories almost um, they give you some examples and in the bold print that's essentially like what that particular bid is actually saying that's how to interpret this list like if if you hear a person say I've been cooking all day I'm so tired it's helping you understand that that bid is actually saying help me de-stress so it's in other words it's trying to help you decode what the specific emotional bid is what's it drilling down drilling down what is the specific emotion it's drilling for um, it's ask here's another example let's help grandma outside so it's actually saying help or work with me so it's just helping you in an everyday scenario to interpret what those bids are saying. It's just a good list to keep with you. And since I have your contact information, I'm happy to send you this link, which has the video you watched, this example, and then this is an article that I send to my students in COM 120, which is a little lengthy, but it explains more about the behavior of bidding and how it connects with times of conflict and repair and how you can use bidding to improve your relationship as a practice and then it has um, the handout that you have as well in electronic form so you can kind of keep it you know bookmark it save it and refer back to it but i really appreciate you giving up some of your daytime class time <laughs> hopefully not um, and and being here with us to kind of take a skill within the communication framework and try to improve that for your everyday relationships. And special thanks to Professor Rufner for sending you here to be with us today. So thank you for coming.